happy to have you around. Happy to. Good. All right, let me then introduce uh, the rest of our guests who are joining us this morning. I do have a Gabriela Nyamu, who is a purpose coach. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you around. Uh, Pastor Samuel Gichuhi, who is a Christ of a King Church worker. Pastor Gichuhi, how are you doing, sir? Um, I'm fine and blessed. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Okay. <laughs> There's the thing, and I, I keep on telling Pastor Rose, that when I get these conversations, I do not do research. Mm -hmm. I want to be a student. <laughs> From the beginning to the end. Okay. We have one hour to talk about this conversation. And I'm going to begin from a very basic point. Let me start with you, Pastor Yeshua. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Married but single. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, my understanding of married but single... Mm -hmm. Uh, people uh, talks about people who are legally married or customary married That's it. they live under one roof they probably share the last name <laughs> and uh, they attend functions together That's it. <laughs> but uh, they, deep down they uh -huh. are not together they are there are certain things that ought to happen within a marriage setup that are not happening so on the face of it they are married but deep down they are single. That is my understanding. That's your understanding. Fantastic. Pastor Rose. Yes. I mean, your testament <laughs> of what marriage is, if we're going to define it from one end, mm -hmm. that even if you've been married for long, mm -hmm. then you might be married, because I do not understand whether somebody can say that you've been married and single for 18 years plus. I'm going to stop that. Mm -hmm. What is your understanding as we introduce this particular subject of married but single? What does mm -hmm. it mean? <laughs> Uh, on my side, yeah. married but single, yes. I can call it a disorder. Something like, uh, 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 it is this, what was God's idea of mm -hmm. marriage? Yes. Genesis 2.18, that he made a helper, those people. He said it is not good for this man to be alone. And so this is what he did. He brought two people. And they cannot be there. Be two people who are married and they are, one of them is single. Yes. So there is a disorder. Something is lacking. That's I it. echo my brother's words. Either they are, just, they are not communicating. They, they are doing nothing uh, of... Uh, of the both of them yes so i can call it a disorder right. some something is missing a disorder mm. good all right let me cross over then to a purpose coach by the way i want you to introduce who's a purpose coach even before we continue this conversation and your understanding of this concept married but single thank you thank you Raj, and, um, thank you for having me here uh maybe starting by the definition of the purpose coach mm -hmm. this is a coach who helps you discover your god-given life purpose no, but also coach you through the process yes. of how do you leverage that purpose or grow the impact no, so different from the normal conventional life coaching the purpose coaching is more focused on your why you are on earth yes and i think that also brings the same discourse when it comes to marriage um when you say marriage and married and uh, separated I see a purposeless relationship there and my colleagues have got a disorder which is true because if you deviate from the original conditions of a state of something yes that is a disorder completely mm -hmm. so these are people of course who we are in a relationship just for convenience yes but they are lonely in their <laughs> context as individuals That's it. and it's only one and one that makes me makes another one That's it. not a 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 That's it. Can't make our pretty much i'll be coming to you then so that we can table that conversation in a proper way now pastor kishuhi let me let me begin with you then let's now dig deep mm -hmm. the definition of marriage from a christian perspective and we do know how genesis envisions it mm -hmm. that a man shall leave his family, a woman shall leave their family as well, they'll jump together yeah. and be one. Yeah. Doesn't go deeper, but if you look at that particular analogy, then it doesn't mean two people are together who've left their families and started a life together. What is a complete marriage? A, a complete marriage by the standards of God, yes. and therefore according to scripture, yes. 
is where the Bible says that man shall leave his mother and father. Uh -huh. It is a man. In African communi community, we tend to think it should be the woman. But according to the Bible, yes. it is the man who leaves his mother and father and joins is a spouse so they can make a what union does that, what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it has deep uh, spiritual meaning because yeah. it is even possible for you to have left your parents up country and you are living with your wife in Nairobi <laughs> but it. really yeah. they are still in your heart they still uh, steer you around you, you you are not an independent thinker I see that. Uh, therefore the, uh, the, the, the living we are talking about the departure we are talking about is not just physical it's also about uh, spiritual and realizing that now you are you have started a family you are yeah. one union yes. and that you need now to steer it together so god's order is for a uh, man and woman to come together and become one united uh, with one cause under god that's it mm. so that's the definition of leaving yeah all right and clinging mm. if i cross over to pastor rose as well mm -hmm. let me give you um, when we sat down as a production team and said, well, well we've got to come up with a conversation around what are these signs that are going to tell you that you are single in this. Number one, mm -hmm. <laughs> that when you feel that you're the only one pulling the relationship. Yeah. But then, Pastor Gishui, let me begin like this. Mm -hmm. That you would like to think that two people who decide to marry have already made that decision yeah. that they're going to marry. Yes. So feeling like you're the only one pulling that relationship is not going to be a factor mm -hmm. because if i decided that i'm going to marry and build a family me feeling that i'm alone in this is never going to be a factor so why are we saying that one of the signs of you are married but single is when you're feeling that you are alone yeah it is possible to feel that way in a relationship yes because when you get into a relationship all of you ought to contribute to this union yes, in raising the family if, if god blesses you with the children uh, as you raise them up it cannot be left to one individual yes, and as you rightly said when the responsibilities are left to one party those are, uh, are the signs now that begin to show that i am married but really there's something that is not working there's something that is not adding up in a union we may not contribute the same amount of money but surely we should meet somewhere in the middle and all of us should be interested in the success of the union mm -hmm. and i will say this many people come uh, to marriage uh, from diverse angles yes. there are those uh, who meet and they say it is love on first sight and before they think about it uh, they are married they are staying together there are others who take time uh, to, to think, to ponder, to negotiate, to contribute and to get to know one another, which is what I recommend, so that you don't go into it blindly. Mm -hmm. But we have uh, our marriages, especially in our Kenyan setup, that are informed by so many things, where, uh, so many situations, so many conditions. There are yes. people who get married to run away from their parents. They get married because now they want to start earning a living. There are many situations that constitute what we call a family. But an ideal family is where both parties are contributing to the success and to the good of the family. Does it? And in the case of the topic we have here about married but single, the only situation that, uh, the only reason that somebody would choose to remain married, even though they know things are not working together, are issues like children. You do not want to, your children to be forsaken or for them to suffer. Yes. Or maybe you are dependent on your spouse for finances. Or something of the sort those are some of the conditions that cause people even though they are not comfortable in the relationship to want to stay on and i know as we go on we are going to pour the, the the implications of this pretty much pastor rose yes same same question mm -hmm. you know for any other person who's not married mm. you like to think that that spouse that man that lady you're gonna meet mm -hmm. has already made the decision that they're going to get married yes. and the only reason people marry is to start a family that mm. you're going to push and start a family so the question is this mm -hmm. if indeed the kids are fine mm -hmm. the family is getting run like a proper business mm -hmm. the kids are going to school the kids are happy the kids are fed and the kids are being brought up well mm -hmm. why then <laughs> if that was the purpose pastor mm -hmm. rose mm -hmm. why would i sit back and say I think I'm single. 
How? <laughs> <laughs> you are single. How? Uh, because yeah. marriage is not about children. It is not about those things. Why not? It is about me and you. One plus one, we bring one. Pastor Rose, is it true though? Mm. Is it true that marriage is about you and I? Yes. That is the foundation, of course. Is that the purpose of marriage? It is. And that is where we lay a foundation. That uh, my pastor has said, a man should live when they live. And we put it together the other day here. Yeah. Uh -huh. The structure of marriage. Yes. Foundation is living and cleaving. Now cleaving is being together. You see now, when now we are thinking about the blessings, yes. we are not thinking about the main purpose of being here. Example is this. Mm -hmm. um, and allow me, it might sound stupid. Yeah, <laughs> continue. That if I get into Matatu mm -hmm. in the CBD, yes. and the aim is to get to Kisumu, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to be in good terms with the driver. I mean, the driver doesn't have to make me happy. Mm -hmm. And the end goal is to get to Kisumu, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if the landing goal is to get to Kisumu, why am I feeling like, uh, what was the contract? The contract is for us to get to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Why do people marry? Mm -hmm. People don't marry because they're looking for company. They already have that company. Mm -hmm. Is it not true? They don't have. They, they need it. That intimacy, that camp, yeah, it is more than a company. It is a friendship. You come, I come. We come together. This intimacy, I feel you. You feel me. Yes, that is. And anything apart outside of that, mm -hmm. it is a disorder. There are causes that can cause that. When there is no communication, some people always say love gets cold. You seem as if you are not feeling the other partner or the other person. But it is for me. Kupepe ayo. Iyo moto that iwe balance. Iwake. You see? Now, uh, that we have okwansa, this intimacy, mm -hmm. this that miss and lacks in the, a marriage, yes. sexual union, when that one lacks, now, things, we are now parting. That's it. We are now starting to part. Yes. And there are many things that can cause it. So it is good now to look which area is our communication. And it is communication. It is not telling me, bring this, bring that, uh, then we stop there. When I was sharing with, uh, with um, uh, Gabriel here, I was excited. Uh, when he was telling me, uh, this, this, this marriage has come like, I go to the shop, I uh, have money, I want a blade. Uh, I pay, then I, no other communication, nothing else. I go and use my blood. That is not marriage. Gabriel? Yes, sir. Papa, le, le, okay, just, just hold on. Pastor Rose is introducing something, a concept <laughs> that maybe might look alien to majority of people who are listening to you this morning. I mean, in an African setup, a man is told, look here, your purpose as a man and it's never changed you can go back centuries provide protect all right in providing protecting for your family make sure your family doesn't sleep hungry make sure that your family is comfortable protect them mm -hmm. i mean your your wife at home should be protected either socially economically through through all forms of protection and they like to think that you cannot protect something that you do not respect it's like my job i gotta i gotta protect it because i respect because I know what it gives me at the end of the day. I might not necessarily feel like I'm gonna like this job, but I'll protect it because I know the benefits it gives me. Purpose. Let's define purpose in marriage. Where does it come from? Because we do know in an African setup, a man marries not because of company or love. In fact, men who do that, <laughs> they're, they're called weak. You can't marry because of love. Come on. You gotta marry because you wanna start a family, you know? So that your name continues, your family name grows beyond just you and your dad. Why is that how do you find purpose in marriage? Great, good conversations and I, I like what my colleagues are sharing. One is um 
we are not the author of marriage as human beings. Yes. It was authored by God himself. So it's God who gives purpose, not us. So we are part of God's code or a channel or stewards to execute his mandate. Maza. Now, I want to echo some words that Rosa, Pastor Rose have shared. Um, we've reduced marriage to a transaction. So when it becomes transactional means it adds when the transactional adds. If I buy something from you, at the end of the transaction is an exchange of currency and that is gone. So you are still strangers. There is no in-built relationship there. I also say things don't go wrong, they start wrong. The foundation, I think there's a scripture in the book of Proverbs that says, yes. it's through wisdom a house is built. Mm -hmm. Through understanding is is established. Yeah. But also through knowledge, it is filled with good riches. Now let's put marriage in that context. There's the building which is the foundation. If the foundation is wrong, if I am just obeying a culture, that is not sustainable. Okay. Because we've seen people who get into marriage just because they were forced to maybe, even spouses were searched for for them uh, they didn't pay a price they, they, there was no effort literally now we've also seen some that are more out of convenience <coughs> convenience is ah, i think i need to associate with somebody who can meet my needs and all that so you That's reduce it. it to the level of that convenience when the convenience is over and you've enjoyed all the convenience you wanted so what so you become empty and when you become empty automatically that aspect of loneliness craving immediately and you start feeling, ah, is this all what I was looking for? And that gives you a sense of now, I think I need to look for something else. So as much as you're in the same relationship, but you're already looking out. Now, it, it takes understanding for establishing a relationship. In fact, marriage is never sustained by love. And that's where I think we go wrong. It is never. Love is not in the equation of sustaining. It's actually through understanding and knowledge. Now, let me say, sometimes um, I'm married for the last 10 years. I still don't know my wife fully. I can't say I have full knowledge of my wife for the last 10 years. Yes. It's something I still discover, you know, every day. Now, we think just because you have met somebody, you have known them. Then, three years down the line, you start discovering some characters and you're like, ah, I don't think this is what I did. Because you had an ideal, irrational, <laughs> pseudo yeah. view yes. of who this person is. But through this, when you are 30 years and you marry a 25 years girl, those are 50 years, 55 years of history in India. So if I'm 30 and marry a 25, those are 55 years. Oh, of that's history. what it means, isn't it? That is it. It's a combined. <laughs> and I can't change that in three years or two years. So gonna, even in 10 it's years, it's going to be possible. Time. <laughs> yes. And it, it takes vulnerability. Yes. And this is why you bring God in the equation. Don't bring your family and clans and all that. That's okay. We listen to them because we are a product of our ancestors and cultures. But you have to bring God in the equation because it's God sometimes who helps you even reveal. There are some things that are you just yes. you know, cognitive knowledge. Yes. The revelation I get about my wife that actually nothing to do with what she has told me. In my prayer for her, sometimes I discern, ah, I think she could be going through this. And through that discernment, we're able to connect. In fact, intimacy, as Pastor Rose is saying, we usually call it into me see. That's yeah. intimacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. See into me, even the naked thing that I've never told you. And be vulnerable that you can accommodate it. Because a challenge I have seen, and I think of this conversation we had here, um, unfortunately, I know of a couple that got married, and then uh, they went for honeymoon, but the man could not function in the natural way we expect a man to function yes. during honeymoon. This is the first time the lady is like, wait a minute. You know, because you expect at least you have fantasy uh, during your honeymoon. But the man has never said he has a biological issue. Exactly. <laughs> so actually, when they were coming back, they kind of came back separated automatically. And that marriage never went anywhere. But you see, that's a lack of intimacy. And that's nothing to do with that, you know, um, intimacy in terms of romance and all that. No. It is a feel of, wait a minute, I'm getting a culture shock here. I never knew about this. Uh, you've never told me. Because people tell just to talk. But when you talk, we talk politics and unga and other things. We really don't talk, especially for men. We don't talk the deep secrets, fears, ambitions that are so hidden. Yes. We have got something called five levels of communication. Yes. The fifth level, which is the depth of the level, is where I can share my fears, what I dread in life. Men will never tell you that. They will appear so strong. When you're dating, you're in your best. Yeah. So you never know each other. 
So if you've not built your maturity enough that you can accommodate each other's naked, uh, very ugly, you know, discoveries, you can never sustain. So I think also the aspect of uh, what we began with, making it so transactional, you know, just making it as just an exchange of currency or needs, whatever. That is not the case. God needed us, first of all, to be under his fellowship. So he's a man and man in fellowship with God. First of all, God is the overall. Yes, it is through that we get the pipe run. Now to agree with Pastor Rose. Children come as a byproduct, propagate godly offspring. That's spoken in um, Marakai. So to propagate and to create godly offspring, yes, that sir. come as a product. That means even if you get married and you're barren, that's still a marriage. It is. <laughs> you can't force it. That's a marriage. But it's out of that God cast him because he has commanded principles for propagating his kingdom that you can get godly offspring come as a result of you. Pretty much. Pastor Kishore, this point mm -hmm. gets a bit complex then. Mm -hmm. Because I listen to you all and, and I hear that religion has a deep base in understanding the purpose of marriage. Yes. Also then means that when you're going to pick a partner, you have to get somebody who also understands the purpose of religion yeah. in a marriage. And I, I know, Pastor Gishu, you, you have couples who approach you for, for intervention, just to see exactly where they are on, on the religion basis. How do you know that somebody knows the purpose of marriage from, from a religious perspective? If I got a girl today, and I came to you and told you, Pastor Gishu, I like the way you think about marriage, I want to see exactly where she is. Well, uh, in our setup in our church, yes. when uh, young people come to us and tell us they intend to get married, we take them through counseling, premarital counseling, to give them a good understanding what, of what marriage is all about. On a religious basis. On a religious basis, but even in the natural, it is necessary. In the African culture, people used to be coached uh, by the elders, by their uh, uh, aunts, by their uncles, and so on and so forth. Yes. But in our setup, we make sure that we take people through premarital counseling. It is in that f uh, forum that we tell them, like uh, Gabriel is saying, that um, uh, marriage is complete even without children. Children, yes, they are blessing from the Lord, but you don't marry. Marriage is not a transaction. Marriage is not a contract. Marriage is a covenant. It is a union of two people. And you don't come to marriage uh -huh. thinking so much about what you are going to get from it. The best approach is to come to marriage thinking about what you are going to give to it. Is that, is that, is that what majority of people do not understand? Yeah, that's what they don't understand. So they come expecting and the expectations sometimes are not uh, good expectations. Maybe they are overrated. Pastor Gishui, what yes. is the product of marriage? <laughs> product. <laughs> that's it. Well, it, I said it's a union. As a, and in this union, yeah. uh, and it's a covenant also, in this union, you become one. You get a, a partner. You become partners in this union. <coughs> and you become a support staff. The, the Bible says that, um, uh, refers to the wife as a helpmate. You are given a helpmate that is suitable for you. Therefore, you are better off. Uh, the Bible also says that one will chase a thousand, but two will put ten thousand to fright. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if, when you bring your energies together, when this synergy comes together, you are able to do much more than you would ordinarily do, even in a, a given period of time. But the, it's also important to state, because our conversation today revolves around people who are married but then single, That's that people may get into a union or into a marriage with the best of intentions, but then other issues crop up along the way, for instance. Issues of infidelity, issues of finances, and I, I know we'll, be, we, we'll get yes. time yes. Uh, to get into the depth of this. Yes. And even issues of culture, because you could marry from, the, our different cultures have the different ways that we look at a husband or a wife. Maybe you come from Uganda, for instance, where women kneel when they are coming before men. And then you marry from my community. That is falling. We don't do that. <laughs> and uh, therefore, there are e many issues that w would contribute yes. into making a, a union have. But if you come with the right attitude, if you come having purpose to make it work, and if you come, like Gabriel says, uh, making God number one in your union, then it is going to work. But it is work. Mm -hmm. Marriage is work, but it works. That's it. But yes. that, that what you should be thinking about is what you're going to give yes. as opposed to the product. Yes. 
that ought to be your attitude that I'm going into it to make a contribution. Ah, okay. I'm going into it to make it work. I'm going into it <laughs> to be a blessing. Of course, along the way, you'll also get so many benefits. But if you look at your spouse as um, <laughs> some of them as a worker or somebody to have pleasure with or somebody to just sire children for you, well, that, that is a wrong perspective. And these kind of things don't go very far. But if you come to it with the right attitude, then you'll be able to, uh, to scale the heights yes. and be able to come, uh, overcome challenges that inevitably come in marriage. Pastor Bose, if yes. you may, I'm, I'm going to come to you just right now. There's something that I, that I want him to make clear. Mm -hmm. Because you're raising some very valid points. That if I'm going to look at what I'm going to give into this marriage, yes. Pastor Yeshuhi, yes. nowadays we do have premarital um, uh, counseling. It's exactly what you expect is the role you're going to play. Mm -hmm. uh, learn yourself, know whether you can actually be able to do what is asking you to do right now mm -hmm. some of those tough questions how many kids you want to get yes. do you want to get two do you want to get three yes what, do you, what are they going to go yes so then can't you say therefore pastor Yechuhi, that the reason for premarital counseling is to see first whether you can get what you want before you can start contributing so for those people who don't get the chance to attend premarital counseling mm -hmm. then can't you see that what they're gonna get comes first before what they're going to give it is true yes but really you don't go to uh, there to, in order to see whether you will get what you are looking for <laughs> you, <laughs> you, 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 you go into it <laughs> to get an understanding why would i marry why uh, would i marry <laughs> to get an understanding <laughs> of how you you can contribute oh yeah and make it better uh, it is not it is not going to be about me i and myself Every time you approach matters that way, you don't go very far. <laughs> it's a, about making a contribution and Im impact in the lives of others. Uh, therefore, yeah. if you, go, you get a marital uh, counseling, yeah. you get to understand certain values of, about marriage. You get to understand that the person you're getting married to is not your sister or your mother. Yeah. They will not cook uh, the cup of tea the way your mother did. If, because there are some people who put standards. I want to cook exactly like my mother. She was not brought up by your mother. Therefore, you have to, uh, to be flexible. Yes. You have to be pliable. You have to be willing to change. And maybe ready even to teach her. <laughs> Pastor Ron, it is. I know it's getting complex. It is. That's it. It's getting complex. It is. <laughs> because, you see, these are the kind of feelings. And, and you hear what Pastor Gishu is saying. He's introducing mm -hmm. some, a very new concept to people listening to us this morning. Yeah. That it's not what you're going to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's about what you're gonna contribute that what yeah. you're contributing mm. is exactly is, is exactly what leads to what you're gonna get mm -hmm. but that concept is a bit alien mm -hmm. Pastor Rose, in this <laughs> sense it. the purpose of me getting married if you ask me today mm. top corner mm. i know what, why i'm gonna get married i'm gonna get married because i want kids i want a family but then you're here telling me mm. nah that's a byproduct of what you're gonna give in yeah I, is that not a problem there? <laughs> because then, mm. if I don't think about that right now, mm. all right? Yes. And I get a woman mm -hmm. who essentially is not going to give me kids, mm. I'm going to feel single. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll be like, hey, this is not my place. Yes. Okay. Yes. I know I'm contributing and giving all that. Mm -hmm. But then the product is also a big factor. It's also a big factor. In me feeling that I mean fully. Mm. As a, you are full and you are not single. That's it, like I'm a minute. Look here, uh, in marriage, number one pillar, it, do you know we have had now the uh, foundation? Yes. We have the walls about learning and covering. That's you it. learn, as uh, Gabriel was saying, he's learning his wife. We are learning also. Even at my age, I'm also learning. Mm -hmm. Then now, there are pillars pillars that hold our marriage number one commitment okay. hey you have to be committed there if you have product you are working on it in total commitment 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 makes our marriages work i'm fully and totally committed he's fully and totally committed in every area number two pillar it is a uh, uh, involvement you'll be involved in every activity 
Now, uh, also, another pillar is being supportive. Whatever I've started, whatever you have started, I support you. You know, you see this circle. I'm very much committed in whatever we are doing and also working out my marriage oh. to work. If it is a, a covering, I'm covering you. I'm covering everything that belongs to us. Now I am not I. Then uh, uh, involving, I was thinking here, here, when uh, our brother pastor was saying, uh, and I could recall this of uh, family in the Bible. One, one uh, their family member was sick. And then they went to seek help to Jesus. They were four men. And now I could see this is what a family could, uh, could, could be based on. Involvement, commitment, and support. So that you do everything that will bring what now you live in this family. When they went to seek help, do you know, they made that, oh, no way to go. They climbed up. They block the loop. Mm -hmm. They drop the man down. To the feet of he, Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. What do you see that? That is the family union and unity. If we go to that area, we cannot sit there and say we are single. What now brings the singleness? It is when the man don't stand in his possession and pray his Lord. Lord. It is when the woman don't stand at her possession. I'm a woman. This is my possession in this family that I work out. And this is my Lord to pray. Am I committed? Am I giving my best? That when one of them is relaxed, is don't bring, uh, is, uh, does not pray his or her Lord in the family, that is where you meet a man saying, I am single because this one is not even helping me. I'm tired. I'm less stressed. I feel uh, even some ladies feel, oh no, I'm giving all, all, all. I'm pushing alone. That is where we feel we are single. That's it. <clears throat> uh, what do you think about this concept? I'm going to give you a story from the Bible. Well, a story is told of a man who had to wait was it 14 years to get the wife that he needed? Jacob. Jacob, yes. That's the story that I, <laughs> so that I want to fish out. See, so Gordon was given the woman who he essentially did not want. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the father of the girls and told, and told him, it is not the woman that I wanted. But I married her. So I got to work for 14 years again for me to get the woman that I wanted. You know, if you listen to that particular story, I don't know whether it's a conflict or whatever it is that we're saying right now, mm -hmm. that you have to get what you want. Now, and I don't know, Pastor Gishu, you're going to come, come and comment on that story. That first, you're going to get what you want, that the product supersedes your contribution. Because in majority of relationships, if the kids are not there, then you will see majority of them end up in divorce. But despite whatever it is that you're talking about, a product has to be there. So on that particular issue, can we find one purpose for marriage? One purpose. One. That you're saying, you see this one purpose, and if I'm going to tell you what it is, then every other thing that you're saying is going to be second to the purpose of marriage. Like once you know what the purpose is, either from a social perspective or a religious perspective, yeah. that the only reason we marry is this then majority of people are going to stop feeling single. Yeah, I want to, I, I love foundations, and it's good that you brought in that story as well. But I want to take you back before that story. No, sir. Um, you know, God created man, and the first thing that he gave man was not the wife. Genesis 2, 5, they articulate God created work first, an assignment for man to execute. Mm -hmm. In fact, the challenge I've also seen in so many of the uh, marriage, uh, cu married couples is if you find a man who do not have an understanding of their life purpose as a man, 
what does the wife come to help you? As Pastor Lowe said that he's a suitable helper. He's helping oh, I see that now. He's helping what? I see that now. <laughs> see that. And, and that's the foundation there. Yeah. If there's no clarity and convictions of your purpose, and I want to talk about man here now. Yes. I will remove first of all the wife. Yes. The man into the scene. Mm -hmm. If the man is directionless, doesn't have conviction on what they start for in terms of their life assignment, automatically the wife will be lost. And it's because man, and I, Pastor Samuel said in the beginning, it's actually man who lives. You know why? Why it's man who lives is because man symbolically is the seed. The boy child is a seed. And in Genesis 1 during creation, how God propagated in vegetation. If you wanted to have more mango trees, no, he had actually, he gave seeds to every species during creation. Now in the humanity, of course, he was himself God as a seed, and that's what created man, and man is the seed. Now, we all know if you have a mango tree, uh, when the mango fruit is ripe, that for, for the seed itself to come out, it has to be separated from the tree, fall down and be planted no, to germinate to create another tree. tree. And I want you to take that symbolically. And yes. so you have a problem. So a man is a seed, a man is a foundation. So, and therefore, a man has to separate from, you have to be kind of separate either from your mother, of course, that's what the Bible says, from your parents, from your mother and father, so that you create a whole, another ecosystem to propagate the lineage of that species. Now, apparently, we have men who have never moved. Number two, we have men who don't have understanding of their life assignment, and as therefore, a... the wife doesn't know what to support. Yes. That's with a helper, doesn't know. They get confused. So, and I think that's why I always call upon men first to kind of start on their way first of all to be clear of themselves. Because when you are whole, whole means you are complete. Yes. You understand your purpose as a man even before marriage. You understand your purpose, you understand your, uh, your assignment on earth. Even the kind of a lady you'll be looking for, the conversation will be around that. Because this lady is coming to help you fulfill God's assignment upon your life. But are you clear with it? Now you talk about Jacob, of course. That's, that's a good thing because today I think I was talking to another group where I was saying with them, uh, don't invite me to, I don't know, for dressing for dowry and the wedding. And I look controversial. And I was saying, wait a minute. So I take you for dowry. I've gone for dowries where you find the person who is paying the dowry contribute almost... 2%. Percent. <laughs> because it's all of us come and give you our money. Yeah, you know. <laughs> In fact, you don't feel the sacrifice. Yeah. That which you've not, and God has given an analogy when Christ is the head of the church, he gives that as an analogy of the family, as a husband. So, what is the cost you've paid? And here I don't want to talk about and those in the issue of the dowries and all that. I mean, there's a whole conversation around that. Eh? But if there's something that you're not willing to sacrifice, including dying for, that's why a seed have to die to germinate. Okay. That's why God had to put man to sleep, to extract the leaf, to create a woman. That's a death aspect. Apparently, we have men who don't want sacrifice on anything. So you want free things. I want to do a wedding. I call guys, the Changia. In fact, I contributed almost nothing. And I celebrate. Let me tell you, that relationship is already on a wrong foundation. Because I better give 20 bob. I better do a wedding of 1,000 bob. I'm not appealing to anybody here. I'm not uh, going to, I'm not a banner. I'm not yes. an advert. Okay? <laughs> but I feel the sacrifice. Do you know what? That which you sacrifice, love literally, you can't force it. Because when you sacrifice something, you have kind of a sense of, this is mine. And even when these go wrong down the line, you're willing to stay on. But if you never sacrifice anything, let me tell you, it's just social, it's just a chaff and grow it with a weed like this, and it disappears. So I like what uh, Jacob did, of course. There's a sense of sacrifice and commitment towards that cause. But in yes. that story, mm -hmm. of course, there's God's agenda. Also, because God was targeting a species yes. of the Messiah. So there's another divine angle there where God is trying to build a storyline and a generation that will later come to birth. Jesus himself. So there's a whole another divine order there. So, but there's an aspect of that, what are you really sacrificing for in your relationship? So I, I wanted just to pack the ladies first and talk about man. Yes. I think for me, I see more <clears throat> of work we need to do more on the men yes. than actually on the ladies. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. I'm, I'm going to come back to you. There's, there's another aspect to that as well. Pastor Gishwe. Mm -hmm. For marriages to succeed, 
it is it is an enterprise we, we keep on saying it's it's run like a business that all the other areas have to tick or keep on improving at least that's the foundation that you're studying you're going to keep on growing and improving as you get better like what jim says uh, it's, it, if you marry at 30 with a 25 year lady that's 55 years of history you can't be an expert with that in three years or two years time it's gonna keep on improving there's another aspect that has come up in the modern times when it comes to marriage finances and that's what majority of, of of women will complain that's why they feel single you see in the African aspect or in whatever aspect we're told that the, the, the role of a man and a woman in marriage are completely different that no one can do the other where the woman is acting as a provider the woman is going to feel alone in that relationship yeah. where the woman is acting as the protector then the woman is going to start looking somewhere else where she would fit the description of a woman in a marriage now we're in that era where we are celebrating um, gender equality and it's a big thing yeah. it's a big thing mm. Pastor Gichu. it's yeah. a big thing gender equality mm. and then comes to marriage do you know what they say nowadays it's 50 50. but pastor Gishui, how is it gonna be 50 50 when we do know very well that a woman has her responsibilities a man has his responsibilities in this relationship it can't be 50 50 especially when it comes to issues of finance because it's 50 50 then the woman will feel even if i earn more you gotta give in 50. i also give 50. all right when it comes to taking care of these children you're gonna have to give 50 percent i gotta give 50 percent so in a scenario what we want to assume the natural setup of a relationship where the responsibilities when you look at it from a natural angle are never gonna be 50 50 then one starts feeling single you should be doing this i uh, you're not doing it you should be giving money you're not giving money or i am the one who's giving this money when in reality i should not or i should be giving 50 50 but it's not let's address that yeah uh, that's a sensitive area an area we would call so uh, the area of finances uh, but i want to start by by saying that even before we talk about equality we are coming from a place where the culture has been protected a lot and now we have had an issue with the, the boy child which is what, what we are trying to recover <laughs> but these daughters that we have taken care of yes. that we have taken to school that we have coached they need to get married and the husbands that are available uh, this boy child that we neglected that we are now trying to wake up to at this moment that poses part of the challenge I do not want to talk about 50-50 in marriage. I want to look at it, um, of course there are defined responsibilities. For instance, the husband, uh, some of his primary duties include providing for the family, That's it. protecting the family. Yes. So those are uh, fall squarely on the docket of the husband. But even having said that, because you have gotten a suitable helper, like in my particular case, when we got married, it is my wife that was working, and she supported me. Oh, yeah? In actual fact, she used to bring her whole package salary, and then she would ask for it from me. Oh, yeah? Of course, later on, God, by his grace, turned yes. uh, the tables around. Yes. But I'm saying that kind of understanding is good. I respect her for that, because that time, the, the situation was like that. If you come with an attitude of 50-50, then that is not it, it is like um, um, the transaction we are talking about or a contract but this is supposed to be a union that is based on love yes it is not just basically driven by uh, by love uh, uh, my brother talked about wisdom but let me tell you this when we talk of love we can give it three basic categories there is what they call in greek uh, eros a... this is the romantic love which mm -hmm. is uh, huge in, in, in relationships but the problem with eros the romantic love is that it fluctuates today you feel so strongly about somebody who can't even sleep but uh, sleep but then tomorrow you feel so low because they did something bad then there is uh, the brother love that we have between me and you and my brothers that is called uh, 
Ephirio. Then we have Agape, the love of God. When Agape, the love of God, is at the center of it, Agape is about sacrifice. Agape will cause you to go the extra mile for your spouse, realizing very well that you are doing it for the good of the family and that it is a joint effort. Therefore, we, we don't approach it. If you approach it as a transaction, tables can turn and now you'll be the one on the receiving end. I, my, my take is that we should all look at it as though we need to do it 100%. I can do it for him. <laughs> if he's not in a position, I can do it for her. Yes. I will not count how many times I've done this because I love her. And when it's like that, you'll see God giving you synergy to be able to do more within a shorter period of time. But it is not good to approach it in terms of um, uh, like a contract. I heard you talking about uh, a product. I suppose we are not talking about the lady as a product because it, it would be very bad for for us to see our sister, our, our, our wives as a sexual object yeah. or as a product. I, I even had a friend of mine, I won't mention him, uh, yes. uh, 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 his name on Live TV, but one time I, uh, we, we were in a we were coming from a visit and our families came to meet us and i asked him your wife didn't come you have talked about your children and yes. then he told me in my culture when i talk about children that includes my wife and i <laughs> said my god I mean, uh, she's not an object she's not your child she's your partner and you need to treat her with uh, love and respect so it is not a transaction of 50 50. it is like um, uh, I, let me give you a, a brief example we have Mount Rogonaut here as you go to Nakuru. That's it. And there's a huge crater on Mount Rogonaut. <coughs> now, you, Simba, may, may be a better long jumper than myself because I'm heavier than you. That's it. But the, the distance between one edge to the other is about two kilometers. So even if you can jump 20 meters, and I can only jump two meters, when the area to be jumped is two kilometers, both of us will feel desperately. Do you understand? Does it? So you cannot uh, pride yourself and say, me, I can jump to it, but we need to jump two kilometers. <laughs> we need God from this edge yes. to the other edge. And that is it with, with marriage. You need one, one another. It is not that I have to do 20% and you 80%. It is our responsibility and we will get there as one. Pretty much. Guess what? We have five minutes left. I want to give you two minutes. And Pastor Rosa, I'm going to come and give you two minutes. Feeling single means that there's something that should be done which is not getting done mm. on that particular aspect of responsibility yet <laughs> is yeah. it is it about 50 50 two minutes i also don't believe on 50 50 yes i believe in a hundred a hundred so you bring in a hundred i'm bringing a hundred it's, it's, it's not a 50 50 it's going to be a hundred the question one point. would be yes if and this is the context just put it practically yes. so if let's say we are paying rent fifty thousand, so you're saying i bring 25 you bring 25 if I, I was earning half a million, why am I taking the other 575? I'm getting the analogy there. It means we should combine effort and build that as a pool, as an energy, a kind of a synergy yes. for our common mm -hmm. good. We say two can never work together if they have not they are not in agreement. That's also a verse in the Bible. So but because of the lack of agreement, what happens is a husband or a wife is keeping some circulate accounts. My wife has access to all my accounts, including actually my PIN, Mpesa PIN or whatever. She can access it. I don't have to give her the PIN. She knows it. You guys, I hope you're listening. So, so the thing is, this aspect of being insecure. And yes. I know there are people who are told even during some, uh, when you're getting to marriage, no, keep yourself an account somewhere, which is just at a lock and key, that in case you manage. <laughs> okay. Now what happens is, what you feed grows. Yes. If you feed insecurity, if you feed that sense of mistrust, that one day my, my husband might or my wife might. If you start feeding that, automatically it's going to nah, go. Gonna go. Now, when your spouse discover that later, yes. it becomes very hard to reconcile because there's a question which is very dangerous in every relationship. If you discover one fault, there is always one billion dollar question. What else have, ah. do I not know? <laughs> no, don't give the devil a foot to hold. That's it. For no. Pastor Rose, clear <laughs> this conversation. This <laughs> I, I can call you back again. I, I'm not even touched on, on how, to re, how to resolve disputes. Mm. That's going to make somebody feel like you're locked up. I have to call you back again. Yeah. Two minutes. Mm. That particular area for responsibility, mm -hmm. as somebody who's had a long relationship and marriage, mm -hmm. Pastor Rose, mm. is it ever going to be 50 50? 
<laughs> oh no. I echo uh, the words of Gabriel. Yes. We cannot go 50-50 because if I'm sacrificing, I'm committed, I'm committed fully. So it is full to full. I only 100 uh, percent. Mm. And now, to those now, uh, before we wind up, uh, I'll keep with a question. And it is good even now to, to just to touch it, uh, uh, Kidogo, yes. that of those uh, that now are feeling they are single yes. and they are married, that even as we go home and we shall come back yes. to bring the solutions, that uh, there is still time to live a happy married marriage if uh, look the place where now the loophole yes. uh gabriel has said yes. because we said last time don't allow an, an, uh, the enemy an inch he will enter a mile to those that he has entered a mile now there is still a way to go back yes, of reconciling again forgiving one another where you failed if it was in infidelity you are cheated like he has said and you have discovered now put things bring things together uh go back as we, i, I, I wind up to the drawing board yes, pretty much <laughs>